I'm back at it again. I got a real special guest that I, I believe that I, I've allowed to, uh, or he's allowed me to kind of just become someone that I can talk to always. And I, I consider one of the, I call him an Ivy League school of the D3s, Trinity University bas head, head basketball coach of the men's, Coach James Smith or Jimmy Smith. Which one? I always ask you that one. Which one, Coach? I, I answer to James or Jimmy, but yeah, Got preferably it. Jimmy, I guess. Jimmy, okay, there we go. Well, hey, Coach, again, thank you for having me uh, interview you today. And again, I apologize about the last time. I like to be very transparent and let people know, hey, man, I screwed up, okay? So <laughs> now, thank you for forgiving me and just give me another opportunity to get in here and just talk to you and talk basketball a little bit. So we'll Absolutely. jump right into it, okay? Okay. All right, what are the key factors that you have that – contribute contribute to the sustained success you guys have for your program um i think the best thing we've done here is is just be innovative and change year to year based on the roster that we have um right i think we play a unique style of basketball uh defensively we play a lot of zone and that's evolved from year to year to where our defensive menu has become a little more uh diverse and we're able to, to do a lot of different things, which resulted last year in us being sixth in the nation in points per possession against us, um, which was the highest we've ever been. And then offensively, we like to play fast. Um, we like to take advantage of, of transition dif defense being difficult for all of us to teach okay. and coach. And so we like to, to push the ball off the floor. Uh, we've averaged over 80 points a game in the last three seasons. And, you know, I think from year to year, that looks different. We're not doing the same exact stuff every year. We're, we're being innovative and trying to to do different things and, and get out of our comfort zone as coaches as well yeah. um, to, to give each year's team, I think, the best opportunity to be successful based on personnel. So real quick, you mentioned that you were ranked this uh, past year. That was the second time your, the program has been ranked, correct? Yes. Yep. And then what does that do for the overall program as far as recruiting and just the overall spotlight that it puts on your program? Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you can climb into the top 25, it, uh, you know, just shines a little bit more of a light on on what you're doing. People pay a little bit more attention to you. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot in the in the grand scheme of, you know, trying to get in the NCAA tournament and win games. Um, but it does, you know, give the guys uh, credit and kind of some recognition for the success that, that they've been able to achieve. And yeah, I think from a recruiting standpoint, um, you know, all recruits want to go to a program that they feel has a chance to compete at a high level. And so whenever you can crack, you know, top 25, top 10, whatever, um, right. it just shows that your, your program is at the level where you, you know, can compete and have a chance to make a run. Okay. And, and then, and then last year also, uh, you competing or you being the head coach for the three V three, uh, world games, what kind of, how'd you integrate the strategies and just being, uh, elevated as a coach at that high level to your program of, of, of Trinity University? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of basketball, if I won five, there's a lot of, you know, three men actions. So okay. I think three X three helps a lot with that. I mean, you see it like horns actions and different things that people are doing that, you know, it was more three, three guy actions versus five guy actions. Right. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that translate translates offensively. Um, I think the biggest thing that I learned was just the preparation because okay. X3 is a, a game that's evolving in the U.S. It's very popular, uh, Europe, Asia, you know, other parts of the world. And for people that don't know, the coach is not allowed to actually be on the floor coaching during the game. It's just the four players on the floor. So it's all the pre-work. It's the preparation. It's the scouting. Um, all of those things are super important from a coaching standpoint in preparing your team and your guys to be ready to handle different situations uh, without you being able to be on the floor telling them what to do. Right. So I think it has helped me grow from a, a teaching and a preparation standpoint and also just, you know, not over coaching in games, letting our guys 
play and me not, you know, telling them everything that they need to be doing throughout the game, which I did like to do prior. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so how so how would that travel as far as that cuts into your preparation of getting ready to coach, uh, you know, school ball? How's that? Because that extends your time of coaching by being part of the world game. So, so how does that affect you a little bit? Yeah, it does. I mean, it's definitely different to be away from the team um, like I was after school had started. Um, but I'm, I'm fortunate with Sterling Holmes and, and Griffin Levine as assistant coaches that you know, they're able to keep things moving forward. Um, you know, a lot of what we can do right now anyways is with our strength coach. And, you know, so he does a great job, too, of, of keeping the guys focused and on task. And, um, you know, I wouldn't have taken the opportunity and stepped away if I didn't have the, the guys uh, on staff that I'm super confident or more than able of, to do the things that need to get done until I get back. So kind of changing gears and, and talking about uh, recruiting, I did get a chance to talk to Sterling at one of the events there. So I know you kind of lean on your, your staff there. But can you share some of your recruitment philosophy and the specific traits that you look for when you're looking for prospects? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I think the number one thing for us is is versatility. You know, we like guys that um, are not just good at one thing, right? And obviously right. some people that are elite, at one thing and and those are guys that you want and you can figure out how to, to how to fit them into what you're doing but we really look for versatility you know guys that can make shots that can attack closeouts guys that'll go rebound the ball you know that can handle it um good passers you know, like you know you like to see those complete skill sets because it just allows you offensively to do a lot of different things um so that that's the biggest thing for us we look for is you know how versatile is a guy um and then obviously we're a super high academic school. So the next step for us is you know, asking for transcripts and um, seeing if, if they're a fit academically for the program. Um, so those are kind of the two, the two starting points for us is identifying talent, skill set, versatility, and then looking at the transcript and, and seeing if, if it could be a fit academically as well. And, and, I, and I know how serious you are about that piece because uh, one of a few students that you've been looking at for us and with that, uh, the pro skills family. And I, now I, now, for me, I take what you showed me and I take that as far as talking education to the, to the boys about the student athlete piece, how important that is. Because, again, one class or missing out or not taking that one class you need to put you over the hump, no matter how hard that class is, is very important. So it I is. know, it's, you know, I, I, again, you taught me something. So now I know. So but when you come to your approach as far as player development, um, how do you make sure your athletes, because I, I know you said last time the guys don't get to spend a lot of time in the gym as mm -hmm. far as you with them. But so how do you make sure that player development is being done? So guys are, are, are growing, not just at the academic side, but also as far as for the player side. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's super important for us as we kind of, you know, we talked a little bit about the recruiting piece. Um, you know, so once we get beyond the transcript and we feel like it could be a, a good fit for both sides, um, then it's starting to dig into the work ethic, you know, the character, the leadership, um, the self-motivation, because we are different at our level of that. We're not given time, you know, out of season to, to be working guys out. So we need guys that um, want to get in the gym, you know, want to get better at stuff, uh, are motivated to improve. And, you know, we do a ton during the season, skill development wise, once we're able to start practice. Uh, and showing guys the things that they need to work on and talking through that. But, uh, you know, in the spring and the summers, you know, a lot of our guys are doing internships or different things to, you know, get ready for their career after college. Um, so we need guys that are willing to get up early and go get the work in before they go to work or are willing to, you know, after work to go and do those things uh, to continue to improve so that when they get back um, to campus, you know, we can tell that they've improved on the things that, that they need to get better at. So, I mean, finding self-motivated guys is paramount for us in our program. So when it comes to that part, as far as your some of the challenges that you have, as far as, you know, coaching at the D3 level, so how do you navigate the balance between the academic side and the athletic side? Yeah, it, it's definitely a difficult balance, and it, it's a real thing um, for our guys, like their stress levels around midterms and finals. And um, I try to alleviate as much of that as possible. You know, so for us, you know, I tell the guys, get your class schedules, take the things that you need to take, take the things that make the most sense for you, you as you're progressing towards graduation. And we'll figure out when we can practice, you know. Um, and so that I think that's something that's 
alleviate a lot of stress for the guys is knowing that they can do what they need to do academically. And then coaching wise, we'll figure out, you know, when we need to practice to where we can have everybody there. Um, what days we need to take things easy based on, you know, the level of stress they have academically um, and just, you know, navigating that balance. So it's a, it's a real thing, but, you know, again, it goes back to, we have really high level people in our program that are able to manage not only the, you know, the high academic rigor, but also um, what we're asking for in basketball wise, which is also, you know, a high level of commitment. All right. So you're, I know you, you mentioned earlier, your team has changed throughout the years. Each year is a different team or every two years or whatever. But, you know, you did let us know that the teams have changed. Yeah. So with that being said, how do you how do you build your winning culture and chemistry for that? Since you you are one of the programs that, that the teams change year to year. Yeah. Um, I mean, it all starts in recruiting, it, you know, recruiting high level people. I know I keep saying it, but it's just so paramount to just have high character guys in the program. Um, and that, tra- that, you know, permeates through your entire program. So for us now we're at a point going into year five where, you know, these, these kids have been with us for four years, uh, our seniors, and, you know, we don't have a ton of transfers and things like that. I mean, we're mostly homegrown guys within the program. And so they know what to do. Like they understand what the expectation is. They understand what we need to get done. And so when these freshmen come in, um, they really just have to follow, you know, they don't even, they don't really have to think a ton, you know, because we're at a point where the seniors are able to, to lead them in the right direction. Um, so I feel like that as a program, that's when you feel really good about where you're at is when, you know, the players are starting to coach each other instead of the coaches having to coach this, you know, the leaders on what to do. Um, so I think that's been a big part of us being able to sustain success is our guys understand what, what success looks like and what it takes to get there. And then they're showing the new guys each year as they come in. So it's a pretty seamless transition. So with, with that, are you, you, are you utilizing any of the analytical data driven in today's sports to help you kind of make some of your coaching decisions and, and as far as bringing players into the program? Yeah. I mean, I think analytics is obviously a huge topic right now within all sport, particularly basketball. Um, I don't use analytics necessarily to make decisions on who I'm going to play. I think that I trust myself in evaluating. I trust my assistants and what they see. I trust the film when we watch practices and games Um, because there's a lot that the analytics don't show. You know, they don't show you know, what, what a guy's toughness level is that you've seen in practice or what their character is or, you know, their ability to make big shots or, you know, to keep playing and keep pushing when things aren't going well. You know what I mean? Things like that. Um, I think those are things that as a coach you see day to day. So you understand about your guys that maybe the analytics don't understand Um, or even like what a guy's doing off the court, right? There's a lot that goes into a guy being uh, someone that you can trust um but we do use it particularly like defensively looking at shot charts and uh hot zones for people cold zones like where they want to shoot from where they want to score from um areas we want to try to force them to take shots from um i think that's been pretty beneficial for us to look at opponents as a whole like where teams like to shoot from but also individual players you know some guys really like going left and you know they always they go to the rim they're going left and they pull up if they're going right and so when you start to look at these shot charts you really can show the team like, look, this is where they score from. So we got to understand that in guarding, you know, individual players. So, so we, we kind of talked about as far as how disciplined the players have to be when it comes to, uh, you know, just accountable to their own selves. So have you come up with any initiatives or anything that players have come up with to kind of keep themselves integrated to help prepare them physically and mentally before the season yeah. or at, during the season? Yeah. I mean, our, our guys do a ton of stuff together. I mean, we're fortunate. We have a tight knit group. Um, my office is in the gym, so I can't help but see, you know, from time yeah, to time true, right? what's going on in here. Um, and you see a lot of guys working out together. You see a lot of guys coming in and running uh, together. Um, you know, obviously guys are, are getting in the weight room with the strength coach and, and doing the strength and conditioning stuff with him. Um, so I think there's a high level of accountability within the, the team. And, um, you know, again, with having guys that have been with us for four years, they kind of know like what needs to be done and where we need to be at physically when practice starts. And so 
I'm hopeful that, uh, you know, we're, we're close to, to being where we need to be with us officially kicking off October 15th. You know, we don't have much time between the 15th and, and we're at UTSA November 4th, you know, so we have just a little over two weeks to get ourselves ready to go, um, you know, for, for a game. And then from there, as you know, once, once the first game tips off, uh, it snowballs how quickly the, the season yeah. gets going. So, um, yeah, it's important that guys – understand what needs to be done and then are doing it and holding each other accountable. And, you know, I feel like we, we've got a good level of accountability right now in the group. Well, real quick, I didn't send this one to you, but I'm going to ask you, um, got any guys that, you know, it was right before I asked his last question, but got any guys that you need to look out for that you think are going to have good seasons this year? Uh, yeah. I mean, we have, uh, you know, obviously we've, we've got the national freshman of the year returning Christian green. Um, he had a great freshman season for us. Um, we expect him to to continue to build on that. Really versatile player, um, just a great kid. But uh, you know he can do a lot of different things on the floor. So uh, we look for him to build on last year's success. Um, we got a lot of seniors. We have seven seniors again. This was really our first like full recruiting class as a staff. Um, and so we got a lot of guys in there that have, have played a lot of minutes from Jacob Harvey, who, you know, I think will probably break the school's three point record this year. Um, Jacob Millhouse, Braxton Berry, Ty Williams, like these guys are, have been key, key members of our, of our program, um, you know, for a long time. So I, I think that we have a lot of guys in the program. Like, I think we're going to play 12 to 15 guys, you know, so okay. I, I can, I can name a lot of names of guys that I think could, uh, could help okay. us quite a bit. I mean, locally, we've got a couple of freshmen that people will be familiar with, and Robert Jackson from Brennan, um, Javon yeah. Tolliver from yeah. from Steele, um, Robert Conrad's from the Austin, you know, Bastrop area. Trent Medeiros is from Buda. So we have we have a lot of of guys from you know, San Antonio, Austin area as freshmen that we feel good about as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, Dean Ballo is a guy that averaged close to ten points a game for us as a freshman as well. Um, Gabe Pars from Austin, 6'8 kid that was hurt last year with a broken foot. Um, so we, we feel really good about our team. There's guys I'm not naming that are also going to help us, but hey, uh, of course, no, 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 again, giving out a lot of names. But I, I think our team this year is not going to be a, about like one or two guys. I mean, you know, um, we, we have a lot of depth and we feel like our depth is what's going to carry us throughout the year. Okay. And then the last question, coach, uh, you know, I always like to ask season coaches this question in reference to. If you were to give any help or assistance or mentor a young coach just starting out, what would be things that you kind of help them along the way to let them know, hey, here's what you need to focus on your first year leading up to year five or seven? Yeah, I think right now when you when you just kind of look at society in general, you know, um, everyone's looking for like the instant gratification, right? Um, whereas... I guess I'm getting old now. So I, I, it's like the old school mentality. Right. But I mean, you, you got to pay your dues. Like you got to hop in you got to go, get into whatever job you can get into. You're not going to be making a whole lot of money, but you got to go all in and learn from the ground up. Like what, what this is all about, you know, um, never, never be above anything. Right. I think this is the first job I've been at where I haven't been washing, you know, practice jerseys at some point during the season, you know, like whatever right. it needs whatever needs to get done, you got to be willing to get done um, to help the program just function and move forward. Right. And so I think, you know, being all in and not thinking that you're owed, um, you know, this phenomenal job off the bat and just, you know, like I said, digging your feet in and, and working hard and figuring it out as you go is, is really important um, because it makes you appreciate things when you get to a place like a Trinity where uh, there's a lot of things that I don't have to do anymore that, that I, didn't mind doing before because it needed to get done, but allows me to focus my time in other areas now. So I would encourage people to go to a place where you, where you can do those things, you know, where you're needed, you're not just standing on the side watching, you know, you're involved in, in as much of the program as you can. So that would be one. Um, and I think, you know, getting creative, you know, like don't, don't just do what everyone else is doing. Cause you think that's what it is. Like watch um, all levels. You know, I pick something up from, going to watch high school I watch you know my son's in junior high like become an inbounds play there you know like there's a lot of aau stuff during the summer there's a lot of good coaches and people doing innovative things um you know so pay attention 
you know, watching, not just watching college and NBA games, but, you know, whatever you can watch, European basketball. Like, there's a lot of really good content out there. Um, and so being creative and being comfortable, uh, like stepping out of what you're, what you know and trying some different things, I think can really help you grow as a coach as well. I'm writing my rapid fire down. So, uh, you know, this week, the, uh, I know you're not a fan, but I guess still have to say it. The Eagles are off this weekend. So, you know, we got our first, yeah, we got to buy. Come on, coach. Come on. Man. I, that was embarrassing, wasn't it? Hey, hey. Listen, hey, listen, hey. It now you know how I feel with the Cowboys. <laughs> well, that's why we're going to start rapid fire with a uh, Cowboys question. So, okay. We're going to jump into rapid fire real quick and then we're going to ask about six questions and then just, Give me your choice, okay? I'm always gonna start football because we are in football season. Don't worry, when basketball season starts, I will ask basketball questions. All, All right. right, Cowboys versus the Steelers. Who you got? Cowboys. Got it. Browns versus the Commanders because the Commanders are are leading the division. By the way, if you didn't know, I do know. Unfortunately, Dan Quinn, our former DC, is over there now. Um, right. Commanders are hot right now. I gotta go, Commanders. Okay. All right. Hamburgers or hot dogs. Oh, that's a tough one. It I'll is. go hamburger, but it's close. That is close. That is close. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, winter or versus the summer? Uh, I'll go summer. Okay. Pizza versus calzone? Pizza. Two-part two wing question. Hot versus uh, uh, barbecue? I'll go hot. Okay. And then uh, flats versus drums? Ooh, I like flats. And then I think last question, Kobe or MJ? Uh, MJ. All day, all day. And then okay. last but last but not least, Coach, give, give, let, tell the people something about you that no one knows, a fun fact about you. Okay. Um, I think something that's unique to my story coaching-wise is that I actually got out of coaching for a while. Yes. So I, I played at Mary Hardin Baylor, and then I gra was a graduate assistant at Sam Houston State. I ended up getting my master's in business with a finance concentration. So I uh, got out of coaching for about a little over three years. I worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, which everyone knows now with the vaccine and all that stuff. But right. uh, so I picked up a lot from that experience um, that I think has has helped me uh, on my coaching journey. And uh, so, yeah, I, I haven't always been a coach. So that's, I think that's something unique. That is, that is very unique because, uh, Pfizer, I'm sure they're paying their staff right now to pay good money right now. Position wise, I'm saying. It was it was a significant pay cut to get back into coaching. Correct. <laughs> but hey, that's you why, gotta do what you love, you know. And that's why I tell a lot of people next to the military and you know, being a you know, public servant, I think coaches and teachers are very underpaid and very selfless people. Yeah, it's uh but it's fun, you know, it's fun it's waking very up. Very fun, day. very fun, very yeah. fun. But again, I just I just like to remind people of how selfless you guys are because you give a lot of dedication to others before you give to your own family. So with that being said, you know, it's always a, a question we always are asked, how do I juggle my my household versus the team? And when it comes to traveling and everything, and it has to be a true balance. And that's where you guys do a great job. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. It's uh it's, it's fulfilling, but yeah, the family has got to be a part of, of everything that you do, you know, for it to right. be able to work. All right. Well, again, hey, thank you, Coach. I will see you on the 9th of October. All right. I'm correct. Uh, about 6 o'clock, you said, right? Yeah, that'd be good. And I'll be there. I'll be there. And thank you again, Coach. All right. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. See ya. Bye-bye.